pleasure of speaking with Miriam Hussein. She's a fellow in the Department of Medical Oncology at The Ohio State University. Dr. Hussein is conducting a research study on patients and food insecurity. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Can you tell me more about what brought you to conduct your research? Yeah, so it was actually kind of a long process. I was in residency at Riverside and we had to do a project for the three years. And so a lot of my friends were doing, you know, typical science stuff about like medications and peg tubes and all that. Um, but I uh, was the hippie of the group. And so I wanted, and I have a master's in public health too. Okay. And so I was thinking more so about what are, you know, the social determinants of health that actually impact people's um, health and quality of life when I see them in the resident clinics. And so one of my patients, um, he was an elderly guy. Um, I knew some of his social history, but not a lot. And he was just a very uncontrolled diabetic. And every clinic visit, I'm going up on his insulin and you know telling him to eat better. And he's like, okay, doctor, saying okay. <laughs> and then one day I was just, I just got really upset because he was up to 70 units of insulin twice a day. And I just told him, I'm like, what is going on? Like, why aren't you listening to me? Why aren't you, you know, following the rules? I don't know the rules, but you know, just like, you're gonna kill yourself, you know, if you keep doing this. And so he just kind of broke down after a year and a half of knowing him, he just broke down and he goes, you know, I'm on a fixed income. My wife is chronically sick. And so she's been in and out of the hospital. We live in a trailer and our kids don't, really, they either weren't around or they don't help. And the only, place I can get food from my social security income is um, the local food pantry and all they have is bread oh. and I felt like the biggest jerk <laughs> in the world and then um, yeah and then, so it was honestly after him that I thought that okay well how clearly then it's maybe not my fault directly but it's a systems problem and how do we correct that and so through that process of researching if food um, food access issues food security came up with that so this was just an idea that how can we uh, continue to standardize and make things um, a system-wide solution versus just um, patient to doctor related in an, on an individual basis. So your study is being conducted at the James Cancer Hospital. Could you um, talk a little bit about the study? Yeah absolutely so the idea is is that um, there's this uh, tool a survey tool that the Children's Health Watch um, and a few uh, pediatricians validated called the hunger vital sign and it's two questions um, to make it super simple especially for kids and their families and uh, the idea is is that it's basically has like 97% um, sensitivity and about like 85 89% specificity and it's to help just identify people who are food insecure more easily. And because uh, through all that research that I've done before that the link between nutrition and cancer outcomes too, that um, the James obviously, thankfully it's a great institution, it's a tertiary, so we see a bunch of people from everywhere, that how can we help um, capture those people who are food insecure when they're stuck in the hospital and then help intervene. Right. Yeah. So, um, what kind of outcomes do you expect to see from the study or some changes um, with this? Yeah, that's a great point. So with this study in particular, it's probably two things. Um, the first thing we're just trying to see if we can validate the same study that the pediatricians and Children's Health Watch did in a general pediatric and adult population, if we can validate it in an adult cancer patient population. So if we can do that, you know, showing kind of the same similar food insecurity rates roughly within Franklin County or if not Ohio um, and that it's able that the food uh, the hunger vital sign is able to identify food insecurity just as well as the standard of care which is the USDA's 18 item household food security scale that would be great so then we could actually standardize it and then or validate it then the second thing would be is that if we could actually standardize it throughout the hospital so that with social workers who are now the gate um, you know the front line in terms of asking about these social determinants of health uh, could they ask everyone and then we could just capture people better that way nice yeah. well thank you for speaking with me today yeah. and I really enjoyed learning more about this important issue yeah no thank you for doing this and for shining light on it